The Daydream by Thomas More, read for LibriVox.org by Derek Beaver, July twenty second, two thousand nine. They both were hushed, the voice, the chords. I heard but once that witching lay, and few the notes and few the words my spellbound memory brought away. Traces remembered here and there, like echoes of some broken strain, links of a sweetness lost in air, that nothing now could join again. Even these, too, ere the morning fled, and though the charm still lingered on, that o'er each sense her song had shed, the song itself was faded, gone. Gone like the thoughts that once were ours on summer days ere youth had set, thoughts bright we know as summer flowers, though what they were we now forget. In vain with hints from other strains I wooed this truant air to come, as birds are taught on eastern plains to lure their wilder kindred home. In vain the song that Sappho gave, and dying to the mournful sea, not muter slept between the wave than this within my memory. At length one morning as I lay in that half-waking mood when dreams unwillingly at last give way to the full truth of daylight's beams, a face, the very face, methought, from which had breathed, as from a shrine of song and soul the notes I sought, came with its music close to mine, and sung the long-lost measure over, each note and word with every tone and look that lent it life before, all perfect, all again my own. Like parted souls, when, mid the blest, they meet again, each widowed sound through memory's realm had winged in quest of its sweet mate till all were found. Nor even in waking did the clue, thus strangely caught, escape again, for never lark its maiden's news so well as now I knew this strain. And oft when memory's wondrous spell is talked of in our tranquil bower, I sing this lady's song and tell the vision of that morning hour. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.